Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us about the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give it freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room that are really not in the room, to the saints that are watching in, to the saints that uh, couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to... Um, Deuteronomy chapter 23. We'll pick right up where we left off last week. Last week we, we opened up at uh, Deuteronomy, or we ended off with Deuteronomy 23. And you know what I'm saying? We're going to open up a can of worms. So I said, you know, so let's go ahead and back up and we'll get back to it. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1. He that is wounded in the stones or has his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. All right, so it tells us very clear. If you are, you know what I mean, you know, a little messed up, you know what I'm saying, when it comes down to your, your private parts, he said that's what it means when it say uh, the privy members. You know what I'm saying? If your private is a little messed up, he said, you know what I'm saying, that thing, you, you disqualify it, all right? You can't make it into the kingdom, all right? I'm, I'm sorry, into the congregation. You know what I'm saying? So that, that relates to us in the same idea of the Most High God. He expects perfection, even, even when we are given our sacrifice. We couldn't. We can't sacrifice no lamb that had a blemish on him. We wasn't accepting that foolishness from us. We can't give away something with a blemish. So in the same way, any anybody who wasn't um, either made or who was who was put in a position. We talked last week about being a unit. You know what I'm saying? Yahushua said somebody can be born a unit. You can be made a unit of man, or you can make yourself a unit for the sake of the kingdom, right? So in the same way, this is what it is. You're just a unit. You know what I'm saying? You end up. You know what I'm saying? Somebody cut your stuff off or you was born, you know what I'm saying, not right or anything like that. It's like you, your butt can't enter into the congregation, right? You can't go when the people are gathering for God. You can't stand amongst them. You know what I'm saying? You got to stand on the outskirts. You got to go on the outer part. Don't mean you can't be a part of the community. Don't mean you can't eat with the people. Can't, don't mean you can't do that. But when we all gather for God, your butt got to stand on the outside, right? Now, you'll learn later on in different parts of our law. Our law also teaches to take care of these people. Right, so it ain't, it ain't our law saying reject them. It just saying when it comes time when it comes time to get close to the Most High God, He's looking for perfection. He looking for the ones that can stand up for the people. All right, go uh go uh, actually keep reading. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. When they say bastard, it's talking about an illegitimate child. You know what I'm saying? So you say you have a child that's born of you know what I mean. Um, yeah, out of wedlock or, you know what I'm saying, just a child that wasn't born properly according to our law, all right? You wasn't in a, the, the child wasn't in a situation where, where they're a valid Israelite, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes because, uh, you know, you have a Gentile father, you know what I'm saying, or something like that, right? It could, it, it, whatever the reason uncircumcised. is. Uncircumcised. They, they uncircumcised, all these things, you wouldn't be able to come into the congregation of the Most High God. Right, so you can see that he's setting forth a, a clear standard for us. Again, all these situations doesn't mean that the person can't be with us. Doesn't mean the person can't be in a camp. Doesn't mean the people can't eat with us. It just means that when it comes time to gather for the Most High God, you cannot be there. You know what I'm saying? Stand your butt on the outside. All right? Keep going. This is this is important because it lets us know how God accepts. It kind of put things in, in perspective for you. People get telling you, "Come as you are" and all that. That's not our God. Right? That's not, that's never been our God. He don't have no qualms. This is, you were born this way and the most high God said you can't come in. Much less, you think you can just come dress how you want to be dressed? You lost your darn mind. Man already told us to wear tassels. You know what I'm saying? You see the man care about what we wear. You know what I'm saying? He, why would he make a law? He said he already told you, don't mingle these two, these two, uh, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't mingle the, the wool and the, uh, the flax together, the linen together. Right? 
You know what I'm saying? You put those two together, you know, that's wrong. You can see that he cares about what we wear. So we can't just, once you learn who God is, it opens up the rest of it for you. It puts you in a position where you're like, okay, now I know the man. You know what I'm saying? Now I know how these people that once you, once you line up and you understand who you're dealing with when it comes to the most high God and you understand that 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 these are his parameters, these are the things that he requests, these are the things that he's capable of saying and requesting and demanding of us. Then when they come to you talking about he loves everybody and he accepts everybody as they are and he meets you where you are and all these different things, you'll get to seeing, like, when did he start doing that, right? Did God change or did he not change? If they say they tell you change, that's fine. Just tell them to prove it. But just make sure when these people tell you stuff, it makes logical sense according to what you already know. And make sure you know enough to where the logical sense matters, all right? A lot of people that just don't know enough. All right, so that's what we try to do. We just try to break it down, make sure that we can teach people the truth about the Most High God. Keep going. Let's see what else we got. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. All right, so we learned about the Ammonites and the Moabites, right? The Ammonites was Lot. Remember Lot? Lot was the, the what, nephew? Nephew. All right, the nephew of Abraham, right? So Lot was the nephew of Abraham. He had two daughters. They were stranded out in the mountain because Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed. The daughters, in, 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 in the mindset of the people at our time, they looked at the value of a woman was having children. They thought that they would die in that mountain. They said, let's get our father drunk and let's have children by him. So what they did is they got their father drunk. Each of them had a child. Their children ended up becoming the nations or, you know, ended up fathering the nations of Ammon and the nation of the Moabites, right? So now you have two nations that came from our same people. Abraham, remember, gave birth to all of our people, right? So you have two nations of the same people, and they ended up standing against us when we were in the wilderness. Because of that, the Most High God said they cannot enter into the congregation either, all right? So be clear. Watch. Watch it. Read it again. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Uh huh. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pethor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not listen unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, mm -hmm. because the Lord thy God loved thee. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all thy days forever. All right, so he gave a very clear instruction. Them, don't you try to seek their peace. Don't try to seek, don't, don't try to make things good for them. He said, and they can't enter into the congregation. They got, they but got to stand on the outside, right? Keep going. A lot of people, a lot of people look at that and they tell you, oh, you know what? You, um, you, uh, you can't, uh, you know what I'm saying, a Moabite, you can't deal with a Moabite at all. That's not what it said, right? It said, don't seek their peace. All right? Don't seek their prosperity. Don't try to make things good for them. We'll talk about this when we get into our history. Let's go. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. He said, thou shalt not what? Abhor an Edomite. He said, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Don't hate the Edomite. You got a lot of Hebrews. We talked about this before. A lot of Hebrews that have tried to teach you that the white man is the Edomite. And guess what they, how they feel about the white man? They hate him. If it was true that the white man was the Edomite, that would shoot him in the foot right there. Stop all this lying to the people. Just go with what the book say. Book clearly told you don't abhor, abhor an Edomite. Why? For he is thy brother. He is thy what? Brother. He is thy brother. We already know. It ain't no way to enter into the kingdom. You hate your brother. All right? Give me Genesis chapter 25. Let's talk about it. Let's see, let's see who Edom is. Another name for Edom is Esau. All right? Another name for Edom is Esau. All right, two Hebrews gave birth to a white person. That's crazy. That just don't make no sense. I don't know how you're going to be Hebrew and then you give birth to a white man. You know what I'm saying? ain't got nothing to do with racism. That's just pure. They like this science, right? <laughs> they like science, don't they? They respect science. They, you tell them something that's scientific, they respect that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to figure out how that thing works. Like Esau was a Hebrew. I'm just trying to figure out how that thing works. What we 
we got here? Let me get uh, Genesis chapter 25. Let's do, uh, we ain't got to read the whole thing. Let's just jump on down to verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Mm -hmm. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right, so they look at it, you know what they say? They say two nations going to come from her womb. You know what they mean? That mean to them? Two nationalities. So they look at that, two nations. You know what that means, two nationalities don't come from Rome. That's not what it said. It said two nations, two kingdoms, two rulerships, two governments. All right? Don't mean two different people. All right, keep going. Let's see. And when her days were delivered, were uh, her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Mm -hmm. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Like a what? Hairy garment. His hair was red. These people gotta tell you, yeah, see, his skin was red. First of all, you didn't cut top that line. That ain't, what the, that ain't what you read. It said that he came out red all over like a hairy garment. He had red hair. All right, keep going. And they called his name Esau. Mm -hmm. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. Right? So that's Jacob and Esau. Another name for Esau is Edom. Right? So that's Jacob and Edom. That became the Edomites. So that's why when the books say you up, don't abhor the Edomite, he is your brother. Well, that's why. Remember, we all came from Jacob. Right? Jacob became Israel. We're named after Israel. Right? So we all we all came from Jacob. Jacob's twin brother is Esau. That's our brother. We're the same people. The most I got laid out for you very clearly. You are the same people as this man. Y'all better stop listening to you people trying to tell you the Edomite is the white man. That's crazy. I ain't never heard nothing so crazy in my darn life. We just darn believe. I don't see how nobody can look at this book and say, yeah, I know this book. And you believe this weird old stuff. We just believe the wildest theories in the world don't need no proof. And what's so cold is these people offer us this weird proof and we go along with it. So like two black people had twins. One was a white person. One was a black person. And I'm not talking about no albino. I'm not talking about none. That was these people. They're trying to say, this albino, this, that, and other. I've seen that. No, we're not talking about an albino. We're talking about a white person. You're telling me the white race is the Edomite. So if that's the case, we're not talking about albinos, right? I'm not. Don't show me. Don't pull up some weird story on the internet about how a black person had an albino child. I know that happens. An albino child is not white. Still looks black. Still yeah. has coarse hair. I don't want to hear. I don't know what's wrong with these people. Sometimes they don't have coarse hair. They still not white. And this ain't got nothing to do with racism. It's just science. Y'all respect science. Y'all don't respect racism. Y'all respect science. I'm just trying to talk to you about science. I don't care how many black people you put in a room and, and you know what I'm saying, and make them get together and do their thing. They ain't going to come out with a white person. You know what I'm saying? You might come out with somebody that's light skinned. You might come out with an albino. Right? Albino might even have blonde hair. Let's go, let's go all the way out with it. It still ain't a white person. Still. And when that albino have a kid, guess what color their kid gonna be? <laughs> Stop playing. Stop playing with these people. Stop telling these people all these lies. Just tell them the truth. The books say it. Why we can't go with it? We all believe the book, right? Why we can't go with what the books say? All right? Keep going. What else we got? What was that? We good there. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy chapter 23. What we leave off? Verse 4, 5. Matter of fact, give me uh give me first John. Give me first John chapter three. Let's talk to him a little bit. He said the Edomite is your what? Brother. Okay. It's first John chapter three. First John chapter three, give me verse ten. I was talking one night. He's all the subjects. I was like, okay, based off of the conversation, he's all the subjects. I think, you know, what I'm saying we got to cover. 
make sure, you know what I mean, you have a clear understanding of what we're talking about. One of these days, I'm going to actually get a chance to go over it with some people. He that loves his brother abides in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Uh huh. But he that hates his brother is in darkness, and walks in darkness, and knows not whether he goes. Do not abhor the Edomite. He is your brother. Keep going. Because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Mm -hmm. I run unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. I run unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I run unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. Mm -hmm. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the father. Mm -hmm. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If men love the world and love the and if men love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Okay. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away. What verse you have? Seventeen. What chapter is that? Three. Okay, keep going. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. Mm -hmm. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. You sure that's three? Oh, this two. <laughs> I'm like, something, you know what I'm saying? Something, something. Ah, uh, that's right. funny. Yeah. They ain't started off good, so, you know what I'm saying? It's two. All right, so this is uh, this chapter 3, verse 10. Yeah, she'll tell us, you know what I'm saying, what you got to do to be in, sin. In this, the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, mm -hmm. neither he that loves not his brother. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Let me see. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. In other words, he's saying, ain't nothing changed. He said, this is the message you heard from the beginning. Ain't nothing darn changed. Let's hear about it. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. Mm -hmm. And where and why did he slay him? Mm -hmm. Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Mm -hmm. Marvel not, my brother, and if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. Mm -hmm. He that loves not his brother abides in death. Mm -hmm. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Y'all better watch it. You know what I'm saying? You better not abort the Edomite. Right? Don't worry about it, though. The white man ain't no Edomite. You know what I'm saying? He ain't even got to worry about it. He ain't even seeing. You think you seeing. He ain't even seeing. White man ain't even the Edomite. All right? Whoever the Edomite end up being, don't you don't you abhor him. All right? Don't hate him. All right? Mess around. Get yourself into something you can't get yourself out of. Ain't no way you're going to see life if you hate your brother. All right? Let's go back. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 23. What you said? We left off verse 7. Yeah. Try to shoot through this. It's Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. We don't have a whole lot to go. We'll see if we can cover some ground tonight. Maybe next week we can start uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Then we can just get to rolling from there. Thou shalt, not abhor, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou was a stranger in his land. All right, so he let us know. You can't, you can't hate the Egyptians. Why? Because they were a stranger. I mean, you were a stranger in their land. All right, tell us more about this. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. Mm -hmm. When the host goes forth against thine enemies, then keep thee from every wicked thing. If there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness, that chanceth him by night, mm -hmm. then shall he go abroad out of the camp. He shall not come within the camp. Okay. But it shall be when evening comes on, he shall wash himself with water, and the sun. And when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. Okay. Thou shalt have a place also outside the camp where you shall go for forth abroad. Mm -hmm. And you shall have a paddle upon thy weapon. You got to have a paddle upon your weapon. And it shall be when you will ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which comes from thee. All right. He said, when it's time for you to go poop, you take your butt far outside this darn camp. And then you keep a paddle right by your weapon. All right? Because when the time comes, you have to dig up a little spot, turn it on top of each other, you know what I'm saying? Turn it on top. In other words, bury that thing, and then you get on the way from it. Why? Let's hear about it. For the Lord thy God walks in the midst of the camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. 
Yeah, yeah, don't be pooping on walking amongst this stuff. Holy. He said that thing got to be set apart. You can't have a poop in the same place as the camp. He said, you're going to have to set that poop apart. He said, the camp got to be set apart from where the poop is. You go poop way over there. Bring a paddle with you. Turn that thing over. I don't want to see that junk. Right? It's, it's important that we understand. If people look at it and be like, man, you know what I'm saying? He's just talking about poop. This stuff. You have to understand that this was the stuff that the Most High God felt it was important to mention. And y'all think he ain't he, like y'all think he ain't concerned about some of the, the obvious stuff that we do? Y'all, it's crazy, right? If he's concerned about where you are pooping in his camp, right? Best believe that the man wants you to dress and present yourself, you know what I'm saying, accordingly in front of him. Right? Ain't no darn come as you are. All right, and I'm not trying to say that the church is his congregation either, right? I'm not trying to say when you go to church, I'm not trying to say it's the same thing. I'm just saying the premise of what they tell you to get you to feel comfortable to come to their church is not biblical. Right? And I'm not trying to say that, you know what I'm saying, if you do come to church in, 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 in a hat and basketball shorts that you, you commit to sin. I don't really care about your church, right? I'm not thinking about your darn church. All I'm telling you is the premise of what they're trying to use to make you feel comfortable is not biblical. Let's look at the book and let's figure it out, right? I know Jacob, he told, he told him, he said, make yourself presentable and take off them darn earrings, right? Keep going. Mm -hmm. John Temple, you know? If you call it the house of God, I was like last time I checked, you know, the temple was destroyed. For the Lord thy God walks in the midst of the camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, mm -hmm. that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not deliver unto his master the servant which is escaped from his master unto thee. This is our law, right? If you got a slave, it's a servant. But if there was a slave that escaped, he said it's against our law to return him unto his master. What's going to happen instead? He shall dwell with thee, even among you, in the place which he shall choose in one of thy gates. There is, if there was a runaway slave and he comes to my house, I can't turn him back to the master. Not only can I not turn him back to the master, according to my law, I had to house him. I had to tell him, come on in. All right, come on in, a little place to sleep. You ain't sleeping on my bed now. You can sleep your butt on this darn floor. All right? You ain't sleeping on my darn bed. But I had to house him. All right? Well, here, let's hear about it. He shall choose in one of thy gates. Mm -hmm. Where it likes him best, thou shalt not oppress him. He said, wherever he say he want to sleep, that's where you're going to sleep. Inside of the gate, not necessarily in your bed. Just saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you in the gate, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to sleep over there. All right, this is where I want to stay. The book say can't oppress his butt either. Do fair business with him. You know what I'm saying? You work for me, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just pick, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and pick these, you know what I'm saying? these fields for me. Get my wheat for me, you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you a fair share, you know what I'm saying? That'll cover, that'll cover your room and board, you know what I'm saying? Your breakfast in the morning and all that. You figure out what you do for dinner. You know what I'm saying? It's just fair. You know what I'm saying? That's what we look at. All right? This is our law. These people can't. These people will come in here and they they make you believe. Oh, see, the Bible was written to control a black man and to justify. Stop that line. They ain't never read you this part. They ain't never read you this part. They not gonna read it to you. They never gonna read it to you. Cause this is book, right? This is book. This is a righteous book. They didn't confuse y'all. Picked out little parts of the Bible and tried to use it to justify what they doing. They liars and hypocrites. You read the book, you get enough information, you can see right through that stuff. Keep going. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Mm -hmm. Sodomite is a homosexual. So he's saying there should be no harlots, no, no whores, and no, no homosexuals. Keep going. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or a price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. Mm -hmm. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Yep, so he's saying another word. You know what I'm saying? You get money for doing some vile stuff or getting money for, for, uh, for, for being a whore. He said, don't bring that stuff and try to donate that money to the Most High God. Try to get that to the Most High God and say, that's your offering. Yeah, don't bring the hire of a whore or a dog into the, into the house of the Most High God. All right, keep going. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Mm -hmm. Usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. 
-hmm. Unto a stranger thou may lend upon usury, but mm -hmm. unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury. Right? He said, if you're a Hebrew, you know what I'm saying, you can't charge interest. That's what it means when he's talking about usury. So you can't you can't do something like, uh, okay, I'm going to give you $20 now. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying, you ain't got to pay me back for three months. But in three months, I want you to pay me at 20 plus an extra five. You know what I'm saying? That's my lending fee, or that's my interest. Or this, he said, no, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You give him the money, whatever he owe you, you pay that directly back to you. What that does is that takes lending from being a profit. You know what I'm saying? Because one, as soon as as soon as it's profitable to lend people money, what's the what's the intention of the person that's doing the lending? To give back money. No. But to keep you poor. Yeah, you're not doing right. Because if I profit. From you, anytime you get in profit, right? You in a, in a capitalist society, anytime you get in profit, you want to repeat, right? They got something called margin, right? So you like, like if you could do it once, that's cool. But now the more I can do that in the shortest period of time, that's my margin. Now it's like, now that's real money coming in. So let's say I profit $5. Profiting $5 is cool. But now how do I profit $5 million by doing this a million times, right? That five dollars good, but if it take me a month to make five dollars, that's no good. That's not you know that's that's taking too long. I got to be able to repeat that five dollars so many times that I'm making five hundred thousand dollars now. So I need a hundred thousand times that I need to do this, All right? So that's what that, that was So when you look at it and you say, okay, I'm gonna lend somebody money, you give me interest on the back end. That look pretty good. I can do that again. I can do that again. Now. For me to keep lending money and making that interest on the background, back uh, on the back end, what do I need? Somebody who needs money. So now it's in my interest that my brother is poor, right? God's like that don't make no sense, right? I don't want so no. Whenever that's against our law, you can't lend to your not your brother, your brother. You can't lend to your brother and charge him interest. Now it's not in your interest for your brother to be poor, right? In fact. If I don't want to give him money because now that's money out of my pocket and now he got it's in my interest to make sure he got money now. Let me show you how to get money, how I'm getting money. That way you ain't got to ask me for nothing. Because now I'm getting money out of my pocket and I'm not getting anything back for it. Right? So that, that's how it changes the perspective of how we look at things. Right? Now, if you're dealing with a Gentile, books say you can charge him usually. Right? That ain't your brother. That ain't your people. Right? Do whatever you need to do with him. Capitalize. Let's see. Keep going. Unto a stranger you may lend upon usury, but unto your brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all thy in all that thou settest thine hand to in hand to in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Mm -hmm. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, mm -hmm. for the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, mm -hmm. and it will be sin in thee. Mm -hmm. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform, even a freewill offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. Mm -hmm. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat the grapes, eat grapes thy fill at thine own pleasure. All right, so you see our law set up? Our law is set up. I mean, I just walk into my neighbor's yard. Right now, you look at it. That's, that's my property, you don't touch it. Our law is set up, let's say you got a vineyard, right? And yo, yo, you know what I'm saying, somebody just, some some complete person of the nation of Israel is just walking through your vineyard. Our law is set up where he can just pick, pick from your grapes, and that's lawful. They ain't stealing, he ain't do nothing, he can, he can pick from your grapes. Let's see what the parameters is on it, though. But thou shalt not put any in thy vessel. Right? So he said, don't you get you a darn bag and start filling up the bag with the darn grape. That's against our law. Right? That's against our law. Now you just walking through, you know what I'm saying, you pick a couple grapes. You know what I'm saying, you can do it while you're passing by. That's right. Our law is set up to make sure, you know what I'm saying, everybody taken care of. You know what I'm saying, you getting a little hungry, you walking through, go ahead and pick some grapes. Don't pull out no vessel now. Don't go ahead and, you know what I'm saying, pull out the vessel and just start, start loading that thing up. Now you harvesting somebody else stealing now. Right? So that's our book. Keep going. When thou comest into the stand into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou may pluck the ears of thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. Right, he said, now, now you walking through, 
Yeah, you can go ahead and pick the, you know what I'm saying, pick the fruit off of the, you know what I'm saying, off of the weed or off of the corn, you know what I'm saying? You can go ahead and do that, and then go ahead and eat it, you know what I'm saying? That's good. Yeah, don't come in there with no darn sickle trying to chop all that stuff up and bundle it up so you can take it home. That's harvesting now. Now you're harvesting another man's farm. That's, that's no good, right? So our law set it up, right? We can look at, go to uh, Matthew chapter 12. We can look at an example of this and how this was misunderstood. All right, you have Christians that argue about this every every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? We know the answer, right? Just because of Yahushua, he speak on it. We're about to read this Matthew chapter 12. All right? You know what I'm saying? We know we know what the end result is because Yahushua directs us to it, and we trust Yahushua. But a lot of people think Yahushua just came up with something brand new. You know what I'm saying? Look at this, this is Matthew chapter 12, verse one. At that time, Jews went on the Sabbath. G Yahushua went on the Sabbath. Went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered and began to pluck the ears of corn to eat. Mm -hmm. That's lawful, right? This is what we did. It's normal activity. Now, it was on the Sabbath, right? Watch this. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day. Now, why is it not lawful to do on the Sabbath day? It wouldn't have been lawful to do if they were harvesting, Right? But there's no law against eating on the Sabbath. Picking something up, that's just eating. The only thing that would have made it work is if you harvested, you got your vessel and you filling up grapes from the thing. Or you got your sickle and you about to harvest this darn land. That would make it labor. Right? So y'all sure had to correct them with that because what they were doing is lawful. They're just walking through eating, just like our law said they can do. That law didn't tell us nothing about you can't do it on the Sabbath. Sabbath only tell us you can't, you can't work on the Sabbath. Right? That's just eating. You just picking something off. They ain't eating. I mean, they ain't working. Right? So that's what you get. You end up getting a lot of people who don't know the law or do know the law and they misuse the law. Right? Or try to manipulate people with the law. Right? And that's what we deal with that the whole time. This is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a whole bunch of people that try to make it seem like they're trying to do the right thing or telling people the right thing. But really, they're telling you lies. Really, they're telling you incorrect. Whether they're doing it on purpose or what are they doing it on accident? It's incorrect information that's being provided to the people. So now we have to try to separate ourselves and say, no, 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 no. We're not like those guys. This is what the truth is. Don't believe what they say. Sure, it sounds similar. Sure, it looks the same. Sure, it looks like the Bible is saying that. Read the whole thing. We're not sprinkling no voodoo on your eyes. We're trying to tell you the truth. We're trying to let you read it for yourself. All right? Give me, uh, give me 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Watch this. It's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> it's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. All right? We just have to clean up some of the thoughts. Right? We've been in positions for a long, long, long time where people just told us stuff, and we just kind of go with it. All right? We just kind of go with it. We got the book, whole time the book here. Every day, every every Friday, we open up this book and we get somebody to be like, wow, that was there? It's only because the people not teaching. They, the people not being taught. Let's teach the people. We can do it. We can teach the people. It's about time somebody got to teach them. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, the eye has not seen nor ear heard. Mm. Neither have entered into the heart of man. It's a good Christian verse right here. <laughs> Keep going. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. Uh-huh. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. He, he revealed them unto us by what? His spirit. Uh-oh. He said, he revealed them unto us by his spirit. You want to know how I went here? Because when we look at what Yahushua did, the people would be like, so you have to understand the spirit of the law. Right? Well, how am I supposed to understand the spirit of the law, Christian? How am I, tell me how I'm going to understand the spirit of the law. He said he revealed it to us by his spirit. Keep going. For the spirit searches all things. The spirit does what? Searches all things. Okay, tell us more. The deep things of God. Okay. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? So, hold on. What man knows the things of a man except the what? Spirit of man which is in him. So, the spirit of the man is the deep part. That's when you really know something. How you going to know the spirit of the law? You ain't read it. Right? If you're going to learn the spirit of the law, you have to get in it. You have to get deep. 
You can't just be at the surface level. You got people that never opened up the law. And they're going to try to tell you, see, you got to worry about the spirit of the law. It ain't really about the commandments and do this and don't do that. It's about the spirit of the law. That was the Pharisee. But how you going to tell me about the spirit of the law? You never read it. Let's read it. Stop being scared of the law. Stop being scared, scared of, of, of the Ten Commandments and what the Bible is going to tell you not to do with and it tell you not to eat pork and that's done away. Stop believing that stuff. Get all that stuff out of your head and just read it. Read into it. Look into it. And let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. All right? This is what we do. It'll make a lot more sense. All this stuff. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't got a lot. Yeah, y'all ain't got a lot of me. All right? I know how it works. I know how that thing is. You sitting up in that church every weekend or not going to church and you want to believe that you saved all the time. Right, but the truth is, you're not sure. Truth is, your butt is not sure. You go back and forth every single day, every single week, every single month. You back and forth with it. You're just not sure. I'm trying to offer y'all a way to be sure, and I'm not offering it because I can offer it. I'm offering it because the man offered it to me. The book is here. The information is here. We can be sure. It's one thing that we can be, and that's darn sure. The information is there. It's just we've been. We've been thinking there's a lot of gaps in the information because nobody's taught us the information. Well, you can, you can get taught now. Anytime. We hear every week. This is, uh, this is 2 Corinthians. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11. All right? These people, it's, it's, not, it's not new that people try to present themselves, look like the most high God, look like they're working for God. It's always been this way. You always have a group of people that sit here and tell a whole bunch of lies, whether they do it on purpose or on accident, because I don't presume that all these pastors are telling lies because they want the world to go to hell. I presume that a lot of pastors are telling lies because they learned the lie. All right? They've been taught it that way, so that's how they repeat it. It happens all the time. All right? We have to help them. A lot of people just tell lies because they don't have the confidence to go and stand up, you know what I'm saying, on what the words say by themselves. They say, well, I mean, who am I to say that 33,000 different Christians are wrong? Who am I to say that? I'm just little old Philip. I just started reading the Bible five years ago. He, he got pastors that have been reading and preaching the Bible for, for 50 years. Am I going to tell him that he's wrong? So, you know, we don't, sometimes we don't have that confidence. We'll be like, well, what if? What if I'm wrong? What if you just read the book and say what it say? What if God is right? What I'm sitting here and pretend like I didn't read what I read and not know what the book said? I can darn read? That's crazy to me. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been teaching the Bible. I don't care if you my darn daddy. I'll look you right in your darn face and I'll tell you, look, that ain't right. Mom, that's not right. Bro, that's not right. This is, the book just don't say that. You can prove it out to me all you want. Once you get past that, the book don't say it. This is 2 Corinthians. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse uh, 13. Give me a little bit of water. For such are false apostles. Such are what? False apostles. So he's explaining to you. He says, such are false apostles. What else? Deceitful workers. Deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into apostles of the Messiah. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He's saying this is nothing new. He said this is nothing new. He said Satan did what now? And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So hold on. I mean, let's just try to think about this. They say Satan started off as a man named Lucifer. And he was the greatest angel. This is the myth that they teach you in Christianity. He was the greatest angel. He was head of the choir in heaven. Right? That's what they try to teach you. He came up with all the musical notes. He is the man. God's favorite. And then you know what happened to him? He wanted to be like God. So you know what God did? He kicked him out of heaven. And then he became Satan. So did it sound like he transformed into an angel of light? Or do it sound like based off of that myth that he changed into Satan. The myth that tried to tell you that he was good and he changed into something bad. The book trying to tell you the man tried to present himself. He was bad. The man tried to present himself as something bad. I mean, something that looked good. Right? Don't let these people line you up. They have you thinking calling on Lucifer. Thing. 
Lucifer the devil. Lucifer ain't no darn devil. Lucifer ain't got nothing to do with the devil. You don't believe me, you know what I'm saying? I, I prove it all out. We talk about it. Uh, I think the, the name of the Bible says, it's an older Bible, so I think it's Lucifer, old son of the morning. We're going to do an updated version one of these days. We ain't got time to go into it now. Lucifer is not the devil, though. All right? Devil got a whole lot of names. Lucifer ain't one of them. We'll prove that out through the book. Bible ain't never called him. Ain't never called him Lucifer. You see Lucifer one time in the Bible, and that's referring to a king. His name was, his name was Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Right? And if you look at Neb King of Babylon's life, his life testified Yahushua. And Lucifer means the light bringer. Right? So what you going to, you know, how you going to, that's the same thing they call Yahushua. The day star. The day star. Mess around it. Mess your darn life up. And John called him that in Revelation. Wait, Peter. Peter said that? I think Peter. Yeah, Peter said that. Peter called him that. Right? You mess around. Mess your whole day up. Right? Trying to make an assumption based off of myths that we've been taught. All I'm saying is, let's clean it up, right? You work, you work for like a bank or something like that. You always gotta have an audit. You have to go back and check: is everything correct? Are all my numbers right? You have to, right? Let's do that with the book. All the time, we should be constantly looking to say, is everything correct? Let's line it up. Do it still match? I used to think this shit. I still think this. Do it say what I thought? Did I veer off the path somewhere? Let's audit it. Otherwise, your butt gets. Ten years down the road, stuck in tradition, and you won't want to change. You got too much invested. You don't want to admit you wrong. Too much pride. All right? Let's get rid of all that stuff. Let's keep going. All right? Satan changed himself to an angel of light. He tried to present himself like he's doing something good. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. So what you think? This stopped happening when Paul said it? You see all these people out here, everybody say they preach the gospel. Right? Everybody seemed like they might be saying the right thing. You think this stopped happening? He said it's no marvel. Of course they're going to present themselves like they ministers of the gospel. Let's hear about it. Whose end shall be according to their works. Uh-oh. I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. Okay. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly, in this confidence of boasting. Uh huh. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Mm -hmm. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. Mm -hmm. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage. Uh -huh. Bondage. If a man devour you, if a man take take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. Uh huh. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit, wherein soever as any bold. I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Okay. Are they Hebrews? He said, are they Hebrews? So am I. He said, I am too. Are they Israelites? What you see in these boys? Look at what he's doing. You have to understand what he's doing. He comparing himself to the opposition. Right? And he's trying to convince the people, I'm the real thing. A lot of people, you get to doing that and be like, well, you know, you hating. You know what I'm saying? You should just do what you do. and don't. That's a lie. I'm going to talk about these people and compare myself. Yeah, are they Hebrews? Well, I am too. Are they what? Let's hear about it. Are they Israelites? Are they Israelites? So am I. Well, so am I. What else? Are they the seed of Abraham? They the seed of Abraham? So am I. What you? So what you looking for in these people? Right? Let's hear about them. Are they ministers of the Messiah? Uh-oh. I speak as a fool. I am more. Right? He said... Oh, they minister my Well, I'm more than they are. You know what I'm saying? This is what he he laying down on the table. He like, just bear with me when I boast a little bit. Oh, they Hebrews? Oh, I'm a Hebrew too. They Israelites? Oh, I'm an Israelite too. Oh, they sons of Abraham. Well, by golly, I am too. They minister the Messiah? Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. But let me say I'm more than they are. Right? Let's keep going. In labor's more abundant. He said, in labor, I work harder than these people. In stripes above measure. He said, I've been beaten, suffer for the faith more than these people. In prisons more frequent. He said, I've been put in prison for this stuff. In deaths often. Uh-huh. Of the Jews five times received I 40 stripes except one. He said, of, the, of my own people, five separate times, they didn't hit me 40 times less one. In other words, they hit me 39 times. Right, and even that, see, okay, let's talk about it. They, why would they have to hit him 40 less one? Because, what was it, uh, 40 days? 
Nah, this is uh go to uh go to Deut- let's go back to Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy uh twenty five. Deuteronomy chapter twenty five, verse one. We just move, we just move right on through. All right, this is Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 1. If there be a controversy between men and they come into judgment, mm-hmm. that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. That's right. And it shall be, if a wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall curse him to lie down, da- cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to his fault by a certain number. Uh huh. Forty stripes he may give him. In How many? Place. Forty stripes he may give him, but what 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 they can't exceed and not exceed. You can only hit his butt for according to our law. You can whoop his butt now, forty times you can get him, but you can't exceed forty. So that excuse me. So that's why Paul he is like on five separate occasions by my own people they whoop my butt 40, 40 times less one. Cause what our people did is to make sure we didn't exceed, we only hit you thirty nine times. Cause we don't even want to risk going over forty. So we always call it the 40 less one. In other words, 39. Right? So he's saying this happened to him. He even suffered according to the law. The man knows the law. But we, we read this stuff. We don't even identify. It don't do nothing for us. It don't move us. Right? We don't, we're not put in a position where it's like, okay, I see what I'm dealing with. Because we don't see what we're dealing with. We have no idea what we're dealing with. Right? It's plenty of law we can deal with. What was that? Go to, uh, go to chapter 26. We can go through this law all day and all night. It's plenty of law we can deal with. And there's so much stuff that we read, and we like, oh, I didn't even know that was in the book. That sounds like what Yahushua said. When I say Yahushua, I'm talking about Jesus. Right? It sounds like, sound like what Yahushua said. Yahushua is his actual name. Right? Keep going. 26 verse 1. Uh, verse 1. And it shall be when thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God gives thee for an inheritance and to possess it and dwell therein, thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth which thou shalt bring to thy land that the Lord thy God gives thee and shall put it in a basket. And thou shalt go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. Okay. And thou shalt go unto the priest that shall be in those days and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God that I am come unto the country which the Lord swear unto our fathers for to give us. Okay. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. Uh-huh. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, A Syrian ready, ready to perish was my father, and he went down in Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. So now let me set the context for it. So remember, this is Deuteronomy. So we've already made it through the wilderness. We talked about all that weeks, weeks, and weeks ago. So we made it through all the wilderness. Now we're right at the brink of crossing over into the land, right? Now that we're right at the brink, Moses is like, okay, there's a lot of young children, or there's a lot of people that was children when we first came out, and a lot of y'all parents are dead. Pretty much all y'all parents are dead. So now let's talk through it, right? Let me, let me remind y'all everything that we went through, and let me remind y'all all the laws that the Most High God gave us. So now that we're getting close, he's letting us know, this is what y'all need to do. First thing that y'all get out of the land that grows out of the land, y'all need to bring it up. And y'all need to let us, y'all need to replay everything that happened. My father was a Syrian ready to die. Talking about Jacob, right? He's like, my father was a Syrian ready to darn die, right? But the Most High God bless us in bringing us into this land. So he's trying to let us know how to show gratitude to the Most High God, right? Keep going, watch this. And the Egyptians, and the Egyptians evil entreated us, uh huh, and afflicted us, and laid upon us our bondage. It's talking about our time in Egypt. And when we cried unto the Lord, our the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. Mm-hmm. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness. Okay. And with signs and with wonders. And he has brought us into this place and has given us this land, even a land that flows with milk and honey. Okay. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which thou, O Lord, hast given me, and thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God has given unto thee, mm-hmm. and unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. Mm-hmm. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine in- increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, 
and has given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the father, fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought Notice away. he said the tithe was on them. What year? What did you say? What, what year was the tithe? And we are making end of tithing all the time. not increase in the third year. I know. What year? Third year. Mm, because that's the what? Which is the year of tithing. That's the year of tithing, the third year. You know how I many times these people have you, you walk in these churches, they have you tithing darn three, three times a darn week. The books say you tied on the third year. That's the year of tithing. When they gonna teach us that? What what tithe they doing then? They don't care nothing about no darn law. They tell you the law done away with, and they gonna pull the tithe out of it. Darn hypocrites! All right. And if you are gonna ask people to tithe, then you know do it according to the order of a tithe. Find the Levites and get the money to them. Levites and the poor people. That's what we're supposed to go to. Right. Even the Levite got to tie ten percent to the uh, sons of Aaron. Then the sons of Aaron got to they got to make a uh, sacrifice to the Most High God. They ain't go all the way up. What's wrong with y'all? Ain't no Levite. You ain't gonna be able to identify a Levite. So you know what you gonna have to do? You got to give it to the poor. I'm fine with you doing a tithe. That's according to our law. That's fine. Give it to the poor though, right? Don't try to hold on to none of it. Give it to the. I'll give it all to the poor. The fatherless, the widow. All right, that's a that's a tie. It was made to take care of our people. Yeah, not the church building. Huh? And you got to do it every third year. All right? I mean, if we want to do it according to the law, but uh, you know, y'all ain't entering no darn law. I just entering making a darn fool of ourselves. All right? We got to get out here and we got to do this stuff right. All right? You people, how you every darn Sunday you come in here asking for a darn tithe and an offer. Go to, um, let's go back to Corinthians. We're going to talk about Corinthians, I guess. Let's go back to Corinthians. Uh, give me 1 Corinthians. 11. Uh, I don't think I want 11. Go to uh, 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1. I haven't been to church today. I tithe and offer it. Five darn six times in one <laughs> service. I ain't never seen those stuff. I'm like, man, if you ask me for more money, give me your darn butter. Don, you ain't preach no darn word. They're made up half of your darn sermon. They're improvising. They gonna improvise. You got the whole book in front of you, and you gonna improvise. Just read it. If you ain't gonna do nothing else, just darn read. Even if you don't know what it means, at the very least, just read it to the people. Keep going. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, uh -huh. even so do ye. Upon he said he gave it to the congregation of Galatia. He said, this is what I want you to do. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. He said on the first day of the week, that's a Sunday. Right? This is what they'd go to. They'd be like, see, as like, you know, go to church on a Sunday. Right? I also said they gathered every day. Stop, stop all that line. He said, on the first day of the week, you supposed to do what? Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, and there be no gatherings when I come. So be that clear be about what just happened. He said, on the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him. So in other words, I'm going to take my money, and I'm going to lay it by myself in store. So I'm taking my money privately. And storing it upon the first day of the week. For the purpose that there be no what? Gatherings when I come. So that means it wasn't no collection plate going around on the first day of the week. Because otherwise, why would you need to gather it? He said, let every one lay by him. That's an individual. I'm storing something every first day of the week. So when I finally see Paul, I can give it to him all at once. Now I wonder what's, going, what's the hold up with seeing Paul. Let's keep reading. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, them will I send to bring your lib liberality unto Jerusalem. Uh-huh. So that means he going to send one person to go collect all of it, and then he going to bring it all to Jerusalem. What is happening in Jerusalem? And if it be met, if and if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Uh-huh. 
Now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. Mm -hmm. And it may be that I will abide, yea, a winter with you, that mm -hmm. ye may bring me on my journey whithersoever I go. Okay. For I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. Okay. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. Until what? Pentecost. Oh, now it's starting to make sense. Pentecost is what? Feast of Weeks. That's the Feast of Weeks. What's the Feast of Weeks about, T? That's when you bring all your first fruits. Mm-hmm. And you do your sheep waving, and you would ask God to give you more of the abundance. Right? So that's the first part of it. And then after that, you start counting, right? You count 50 days. Right? You count 50 days. And not just 50 days. You count weeks. Yeah, 50 days. Right? You count, you count weeks. You say, I want seven weeks. Yeah. Which is... Seven weeks, and then you add one day to that end of that thing, and that's your 50th day, and that's going to be your Feast of Weeks, right? So you would count weeks. So now it makes sense. The Feast of Weeks, let's, let's, I mean, let's just break it down where it starts. You have Passover. This is a week. This is all according to Leviticus 23. You can read it your darn self. You have Passover, which is going to be a week, right? And then the Sabbath within that week is going to be, uh, I mean, the day after the Sabbath within that week is going to be a Sunday, right? It's going to be the first day of the week. So the day after the last day of that week, the first day of the week, is going to be the first fruit sheaf waving. From that time, you count seven weeks, right? Seven weeks, technically, the end of seven weeks from there is going to take you to another Sabbath. Then you have to take it to the next day, which is going to be a Sunday, right? But every you start on a Sunday, the whole count starts on a Sunday, and then every week you have to count weeks. You have to count seven weeks according to our law. So why would it make sense that on a Sunday you store every Sunday until Ephesus, I mean until Pentecost? You have to bring your weight. You to... That was the law. That was what we did. If we're counting weeks. Every week on Sunday, he said every first day of the week, that's what we just read, put by yourself store. This is your personal thing. He wasn't talking about nobody coming together. And he said at the end of it, I'm going to send somebody to collect from y'all. Individually, I'm going to send somebody to pick up all your stuff. And if it be God's will, he might go with me to Jerusalem. But if not, I'm collecting from him. He's going to take it butt back home. That's nothing with what y'all see in church. Paul wasn't passing around no darn collection plate like y'all trying to make it seem like. Stop that lying. They never gave credence to a Sunday. Never gave credence to a Sunday. Even when you look at the Sunday, that's according to our law, which y'all say it's done away with. Every time you read Sunday in this book, a first day of the week in this book, it tied back into our law. Yahushua rose up on the first day of the week. Yeah, he rose up on the same day as the first fruit sheaf waving. Right? The Holy Ghost came down the first day of the week. Yeah, that was Pentecost. Give us more. Right? The disciples gathered on the first day of the week. Yep. And that was also Pentecost. They was leading up to Pentecost. You read that day and count it all the way through. They was looking and it led it up to the Feast of Weeks. It led up to the Feast of Weeks. Every time you look at it, it got a reason it's tied to our law. If you don't believe me, go look it up for yourself. These people been lying to us. All they do is darn lie to us and the proof is right there in the pudding. Nobody had to, nobody, nobody cared enough about it just here and teach us the truth. Most like God cared. That's why he give it to us. That's the reason why he give. He ain't giving it to me just because I got it. He giving it, he giving it to us. He giving it to me so I can teach. That's it. I serve my use when most I got it. You know what I'm saying? Strike my darn tongue or something. Shut your boy. Just shut up, boy. You ain't got nothing else to say. You talk what I told you to teach. It ain't about me. It ain't nothing, nothing about none of us. It's about all of us individually learning to do the right thing according to the Most High God's word. That's all it's about. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Grab me, uh, grab me, uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-six. Where we leave off? Let's try to finish up Deuteronomy twenty-six. That way, we run enough off at verse twelve. Verse twelve. Okay, we gonna finish this up. That way, uh, next week we can just start off at Deuteronomy twenty-seven and just lead into. Uh, Lead into 28. It's the book, man. It's important that we understand what we're dealing with here. Thou 
Thou shalt have a place also outside the camp where you shall go forth abroad. Uh huh. And thou shalt wait. That's verse twelve. Verse twenty three. So, When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase, the third year, which is the year of tithing, and hast given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, mm -hmm. that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Mm -hmm. Then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, I have brought away the hollow things out of my house, and also have given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, and to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all, the, all thy commandments which thou hast commanded thee. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. Mm -hmm. I have not eaten thereof in any in my mourning, neither have I taken away aught therefore thereof of any unclean use. Now y'all see that the little tithes y'all been given all that they've been wrong. He said part of that tithe you gotta say, I have not forgotten what? I have not eaten thereof in my mourning. Go back before that. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. So now, y'all always talking about the law done away with. Y'all don't know no darn law. There's no way that you can probably give a tithe. That's what you're supposed to say. There's no way that you can probably give a tithe. Y'all been messing it up from the darn beginning. Ain't your fault, though. These people ain't never taught you. They just told you to write down. They just told you to check box. You know what I'm saying? You got two you got offering and tithes on the thing. They just told you to check the box and say tithe. You know what I'm saying? Write in 10%. Write a check for 10%. Every week. Every darn week you got to give 10%. Every week. People been eating into y'all darn pockets. What's wrong with you? Keep going. I have not 10 transgressed every darn week. commandments. Neither you get to the end of the year. Them. That's worse than darn pay. That's worse than a, a credit card bill. <laughs> every week I'm paying you 10%. These people have lost their darn mind. Every darn Sunday, you go, oh, yeah, Sunday, 10%. You robbing God. Stop that line. These people sit here a lot of death. Keep going. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten thereof in my mourning, neither have I taken away aught thereof of any unclean use, mm -hmm. nor given aught thereof for the dead. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord thy, my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. Mm-hmm. Look down from thy holy, holy habitation from heaven. Look down, Lord. And bless thy people Israel. That's right. In the land which thou hast given us, as thou swear unto our fathers, a land that flows with milk and honey. This, that, that's how we line it up, right? He trying to let us know, this is what you need to walk in. This is the type of righteousness you have to, need to have, and this is what you need to say to God. Moses is telling us. That's the end of it. This day the Lord thy God has commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Mm -hmm. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he has promised thee and thou shouldst keep all his commandments. And to make thee high above all nations which he hath made, in praise and in name and in honor, and that thou may be a holy people unto the Lord thy God as he has spoken. I got that. All right? He's saying, y'all entered into an agreement with the Most High God this day. You know what I'm saying? Y'all better keep the commandments. He'll make you good. He'll keep his end. You know what I'm saying? Y'all better keep your end. Right? It's fitting because the next chapter he's going to start going into curses. Right? Then he's going to start going into a couple of blessings. Then he's going to get it but right back into a whole bunch of real tough curses. All right? Blessings and curses what we're about to be covering next week. All right? We're going to try to break these things down as much as we can. Might, we might spend a couple weeks on it. I don't know. We'll see. All right? But we'll, we'll get into it next week. All right? Just make sure y'all paying attention. Make sure we understand what we're dealing with, what we're getting into. Don't let nobody try to talk you in or just, you know what I'm saying, being a darn Christian just because. I don't mean no darn sin. Get yourself the truth. Make sure you, whatever you get into, you spend all these years in school, you want to verify, you don't want any old professor, you're not going to any old college, you want to make sure you go to a prestigious one, one where they know what they're talking about, you want to get your kids in a magnet school, you want to, all these other things, we pay, pay a whole lot of attention, let's make sure we get the correct information when it comes to our soul, right? All this other stuff is good too, that's fine, that's good, but they ain't going to last forever, this stuff going to last forever. Let's get the correct information, all right? We'll talk next week.